future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com. Welcome to the Universal Broadcasting Network's Hit Afternoon Show. Bringing you the latest in music news, artist interviews, and more. With your hosts, Lauren Dare Owens, Justin Tanucci, and Taylor Reyes. This is The Music Project. Hey, everybody. I'm Justin Tanucci. I'm Lauren Darrow, and I'm running the board today. Yeah, Garrett is actually in Las Vegas today. It's his 18th birthday. Happy birthday, Garrett. I know that you would rather be in Vegas partying at Life is Beautiful Festival yeah. than sitting here with us. So we we'll, don't blame you. We'll get a, a an in-detail report mm. of, of the show as soon as he gets back. I know yesterday so he um, closed the out week. the night with um, Imagine Dragons, and they oh, yeah. played until midnight, I guess. And so he said like that was That's great. a great start to his 18th birthday so that's awesome happy birthday garrett this is the music project brought to you by hubert's lemonade got her snap of the day i've never had blood orange so i'm very excited to try this this will be a new flavor for ready you. one two three awesome let me try this one it's all one right. of my favorites all right i like it i approve that is great i love that i went to a foo fighters concert on monday how was that that was fun um, I was supposed to go on Sunday, freaking, but mine got moved till October. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I don't know why they just changed that one show date. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Um, but how was it? Did it was great. Freaking uh, Jack Black came up for a song. <laughs> and uh, Stephen Nix and Haim were there. And I mean, just the cool thing about L.A. is Dave Grohl's so popular. Yeah. He's like <laughs> T-Swizzle popular. Like he is the T-Swizzle totally of world. the rock world. Yeah. So whenever he has a show, like all of his buddies come and his mm -hmm. buddies are like literally the coolest <laughs> people in the history of freaking rock and roll. Yeah. So it's always great when there's an L.A. Foo Fighters show. Oh, yeah. Because it goes on forever and there are so many surprises and guest performances. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to a Foo Fighters show before? Uh, that was my first yeah, it took me 20 years, four of which I were not conceived yet. <laughs> <laughs> They've been around for 20 years, wow. Yeah, they're old. They're getting up there. Mm, I love but them But the funny still. thing is, that's the same as Green Day. Like, yeah, that's Green true. Day, I guess that's but true. I, I always picture Billy Joe Armstrong as younger than Dave Grohl. Yeah, but they're, I guess they're not. They're close. They're close to each other. Each other's age. Well, and I mean, Dave's been going mm -hmm. for longer because he had Nirvana. And yeah, but what I like, blah, I guess, blah. about both of them are they are open to doing other projects. Like, one of my favorite things yeah. is when uh, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong did, I think it was with uh, Nora Jones, like just like an acoustic yep. kind of bluegrassy singer songwriter album, and no one expected it. And Dave Grohl does a bunch of side projects. Like, they're both really cool about trying new things, which yeah. I totally respect. So today we have an awesome show with us. It's actually an intimate show because mm -hmm. it's just us and me and Lauren in the studio. And then we've got a call in from an awesome band, uh, Great Good Fine OK. How are you guys? Hey, hey. How's doing really well. So on the phone with us, we have John and Luke. Now, just so everyone has like a, <laughs> a picture of whose voice goes to what name, which one do you guys mind just like introducing yourself and saying kind of your role in the band and. Um, yeah, I am John. Um, I'm the singer. And I'm Luke, um, and I'm the one with glasses. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I just pulled your picture up, so now we can see exactly which one you guys are. Perfect. Um, so I actually found you guys a while back ago when I was interning um, at a record label. We were using some weird website, and I found you guys. Um, I'm pretty sure it was... Um, hilly dilly or something like that and i found you guys i was like whoa they're awesome and it took us a little while but i wanted to bring you guys on and say that you are fantastic um thank you can you guys give us just a little bit um about your background about how you got started in music and how you guys came together to form great good fine okay and the the story behind yeah. the name <laughs> uh, yeah so basically uh luke and i have been playing music our whole lives 
Um, and we became friends about five years ago, um, but never really worked together on anything. Did a few things here and there. Um, we knew each other through um, uh, another musician who we were both friends with. Um, and then just a couple of years ago, uh, we decided that it would be cool if we tried to write a song together. Um, so Luke, um, there was, as the story goes, we ran into each other uh, on the street after not seeing each other for a really long time and decided, like, this is the night that we're going to actually do this. So that night, Luke sent me um, the music for uh, what ended up being the one for me. And that night, I wrote um, the lyrics and the melody to it, and we kind of went back and forth with it and created this song that uh, people were really excited about. And so from there, we um, kind of formed a little team and kept writing songs, and it That's turned awesome. into the band. It's, it's always great when it kind of doesn't even happen on purpose, when, <laughs> like the song kind of just makes itself and uh, like just to uh, kind of culminate the fact that you just wrote an awesome song. You, it's like, man, there's, there's nothing else for us to do. <laughs> kind of have to make a band. Right, that's exactly what happened. And you know, like Luke that's and I awesome. were both really busy during the time uh, that it happened. Neither of us expected to start a whole band out of this, but um, certainly excited that so, it happened like that. And I feel like there's probably like a lot less pressure when it's that way because when you like yeah, when, when you're in a band and you have maybe like a deadline or something you're like okay we got to write this many songs before you have you know we can put out an EP but when you're doing it it's kind of like a hey, fun thing let's write a song it's, you're a lot more relaxed totally and totally I feel like the experience is yeah a lot like more we fun didn't even we felt that pressure later on like once like everything got moving and everything but like the beginning for the first few months it was kind of cool to just not have that and it was like wow this is like yeah. A it's, super fun thing that we're just doing for fun. It's literally the only time in the course of being a band where you don't have like any deadlines or anyone necessarily. I mean, people aren't actively. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people are, but like in general, people aren't actively always waiting. Like, okay, today are they going to put out a song? And it's just the beginning is great because yeah. it's the only time that there's never a specific kind of deadline that you have to be like, okay, we. We haven't done anything for a while, blah, 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 blah. It's like, or, we can take as long as we want to get this out in the world. No one's expecting anything. Exactly. So tell us about the name Great Good Fine OK. I think that's so creative and it like kind of catches your ear. How'd you guys come up with that? Sounds like an argument. That was a, like, <laughs> great, good, that was fine, a name that, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a name that, it was John, that was a name that kind of uh, just popped into my head years ago. And I honestly can't remember why it did or what I was thinking when it did, but I always sort of knew that it was an, it could be an amazing band name. And so I was just kind of holding it and waiting for the right project. And then when this came along, it felt like the absolute perfect pairing. That's that great. Music for making. It's kind of like one of those things where you come up with like a really good song name. Have you ever done that? Like where you think, oh, this would be a great name for a song. I haven't written it yet, but I'll eventually write a song <laughs> called da -da -da. But I know it's going to be a good song. Yeah, I just know it's going to be that. It's similar with band names. I, I feel you on that. So you guys said you come together almost, you know, on accident to create this band. But what type of musicians inspire you guys to create the music that comes from Great Good Fine OK? Like where are both of your backgrounds from musically? that have kind of influenced everything that you've created? Well, I guess um, for me, I kind of, I started playing music when I was little, when I was like six or seven, I started playing piano. Um, and then I started playing drums maybe when I was 10 and then kind of like got into electronic music as soon as my parents got a computer and I like figured out how to like put software on it to make music with. Um, but yeah, kind of like, as much as like listening to music has influenced me, I think like a lot of it comes from just learning the craft of each of those things. That's awesome. And what about um, what about the other one, John? John. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like kind of same with me, where uh, I've been writing songs like my whole life. Um, before I could be that influenced by their music. So, um, but as far as like what's influencing, uh, like we're both fans of uh, so much different type of music, so many different genres. Um, but for this music in particular, I'd say like, you know, people like Michael Jackson and Prince and yeah. that kind of stuff is like, mm -hmm. that's like kind of like the musical the, the influence and... um, we're going for. 
kind of like um, you know electronic mixed with R and B kind of mm-hmm. kind of thing. So it's like a kind of like a I don't want to say where... showy mix, but it, like it has something that just kind of catches your ear because it's a little bit different and a little bit you know a little bit more exciting. Yeah, I mean we're like making music that we really love. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like at least for me, it's like the type of yeah. music I want to be listening to right now. So yeah. it's like fun to be able That's to great. do that. Like, I think like every musician. Um, goes through periods where they're kind of making music, um, but they wouldn't necessarily listen to the music that they're making. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so in this in this band, it's like the opposite. I like I really like the music we're making, and uh, that's so awesome. That's what it's like what you listen so to in your free time. You're like, yeah, I listen to my own band just because you know we're that good. <laughs> well, it's it's always nice to say like if you want to hear something out in the musical world that just no one has provided. Why the hell not make it yourself? <laughs> I mean, pretty much. You know, like if if you want to hear an album that hasn't been made before, mm-hmm. just make an album that's never been like it's. So it's kind of cool to kind of kind of do the opposite of what the conventional thought is. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I heard this song. I think it's really cool. It inspired me to do something similar. Mm-hmm. It's cool to be like, I heard this song and I heard what it didn't do, so I want to do that instead. Um, so we have a few songs from you guys here. Mm-hmm. And then um, we're going to start with your song, Take It or Leave It. Um, and then when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about this tour you're about to embark on, which we're very excited to talk about. So can you tell us a little bit about Take It or Leave It? Yeah. Um, so Take It or Leave It, we kind of, um, we were away on this like little writing trip that we planned for ourselves. And we were writing songs and we were really excited about a couple of them. And then that one, just like the morning we were going to leave, um, kind of started that. And we both were like, wow, like, uh, this is the one we are most excited about. So we like continued. And this was only a couple months ago. So it's like by far the quickest we've ever gone from, uh, writing a song to releasing it, which is also kind of cool because it feels so present to us. Um, and yeah, so like we haven't released this song in a long time. So we were just, you know, hoping that people would like it. And we felt like, um, you know, a little bit of pressure for, for it to do well. And so we're really excited that people are liking it. And uh, yeah, we love so We've been playing it live and people are connecting to it. So that's really cool. Awesome. Well, let's take a listen to Take It or Leave It by Great Good Final K. Came in from the other side, took your time, made me feel alive. Why'd you let me go? You never tried. You want to be alone? What did you take of mine? Was it funny like you're the other guy passing on by? Everything you can think when you are a kid. Funny how we try to put you in line. I can make a living selling lies like that.
Yes, that's and all I have to say. We are back with great, good, fun, okay. <laughs> yes, so much Thank yes. You. A lot of yes on that. My I favorite, love it. <laughs> I love vocal samples. I could play with vocal samples all day, every day, because you can always make an awesome song with them. There's so much fun to play with. Yeah, totally. Um, that vocal sample at the beginning and then that bridge part, is just like a part of i think it's like something from the chorus yeah Mm -hmm. or like maybe even an earlier version of the chorus before this like final one that's actually in the song that i kind of took and just you know i literally just found like cool little like snippets of like different vowels and then (laughs) figured out what kind of a melody i could make out of them and then that's what you hear well that's one awesome thing about electronic music now Because you can take any sound and sample it, or you can take a guitar and reverse it and put, like, you can just, there's so many more, like, audio options with uh, just manipulating wavelengths and just making it electronic. A lot of colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you can just add so much dynamic that it just adds, I don't know, another dimension to it. Yeah, I agree. But, again... Now, going back to you currently, you guys are starting your tour with Vacationer today, right? Well, we actually are 11 or 12 shows into it. Okay. Yeah, we're actually on, we're driving right now. We're um, about to get on I-35 <laughs> between Austin and Dallas. And how has, been, how has those first shows been so far of this tour? They've been great. Like, um... They've exceeded our expectations. The crowds have been amazing. Uh, yeah, all of them have been really fun. It's crazy. This is the longest tour we've been on by far. So mm-hmm. we've already played 12 shows, and we yeah. still have about 17 shows to go. So <laughs> we're like a That's third awesome. of the way through. Do you um, guys have a, a favorite destination to go to on tours or a favorite bin- place you've been so far this tour that's maybe new from another tour? Um, I don't know. I think we we're pretty big fans of Texas, where we are right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just because the the crowds here in the past, we've only played here one other time actually, um, but the the crowds have just been amazing. Everyone's been really receptive. Mm-hmm. Um, and Austin, we've actually been to Austin a few times playing South by great. Southwest. Yeah. But have yeah, you, have we guys... also really really love playing in LA. LA is fun. Um, and. Yeah, uh, California in general. I mean, because we're from New York, so okay. going to the West Coast is always awesome. And mm-hmm. especially, yeah. like, the Pacific Northwest, like, you know, we haven't been there that often. And so yep. when we go there, that's really exciting. Are you guys um, going to be playing a hometown show on this tour? Yeah, we actually, on, uh, when was it, September 17th, we played in Brooklyn. And so that was really cool. Um And we had never played in Florida, and we played three shows there um last week. So that was really fun, and yeah, this tour is just really awesome because we get to a lot of the places we love that we've played a bunch of times and also a ton of places we've never played. That's cool, and then you guys are playing Santa Barbara on October 4th, I believe, correct? Yep. Over in our neck of the woods. Santa Barbara, dude. (laughs) I love Santa Barbara. So many beach people and long borders. And it's kind of it's it's a little bit more pretty than Los Angeles. Yeah, because Los Angeles is a dump. No offense, Los Angeles. I love the well, city. Well, actually, I'll tell you guys a little story. Go we for were it. Supposed to play LA yeah. and San Diego on this tour, mm-hmm. um, which would be two show of the shows that we were most excited about. And in a crazy thing, my first cousin is getting married uh, during those days, and so I have to fly back to New York, um, and we have to miss those two shows, and that's why uh, oh, the only man. show. In mm-hmm. sort of Southern California, is the Santa Barbara show. Well, congratulations to your cousin, but unfortunately, <laughs> we won't get the chance to see you play. Yeah, we were excited about that. LA, LA is such a fun city, but I don't know if I would call it pretty. Like, there's so much to do here and so many things going on, yeah. but there are definitely a lot more pretty places. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Everywhere. Even if you go up north just a little bit. Yep. Yeah, I haven't ever been to Santa Barbara, so I'm excited to check yeah, that out. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, like, I guess a lot of people compare Santa Barbara and, like, Santa Monica, but Santa Barbara's so much prettier, I guess. I don't know. Santa Monica's just dirty. So I would much rather go the, you know, extra hour. And traffic, man. Yeah. Honestly, I don't even know if it would be an extra hour just because traffic in Santa Monica is so bad. 
Very true. So we have another song from you guys here, mm-hmm. and this song is awesome because it is the first song you guys wrote. Um, you're the one for me. Or wait, so that one that one was the one you guys kind of came together with and wrote. The yeah, first yeah, exactly. I had I uh, had the music kind of going for a couple months. That was just the thing I had been working on, and then um, John and I ran into each other on the street, and you know. I gave him the track that night, and then he wrote the lyrics and awesome. melody to it. That's awesome. So. All right, awesome. so this is "You're the One for Me" by by Great Good <laughs> Fine OK. <laughs> with the music project brought to you by Hubert's Lemonade. Again, I'm loving this blood orange stuff. I've never had this flavor, and it might, it might just be my new favorite. Orange, you glad it doesn't have real blood in it? That was creepy on so <laughs> many levels. Ugh. But um, tsh- It's not Halloween yet. You can't make those jokes yet. We're close enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
Halloween Horrors is open. Uh, okay. When, All Hallow- right. when Halloween Horrors is open at Universal, I just consider it Halloween All for, right. for the All whole right. month. We're almost to October 1st. Then it's, it's officially like Halloween. It's like Christmas season when you start hearing Christmas music. The day after Thanksgiving? Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll tell you that. But we are back. Segway. <laughs> we are back with Great Good Fine OK. Um, so you guys also had a remix on X Ambassadors Renegades Remix EP. How was that to produce and put out there? Yeah, um, it was fun. I mean, it's it's obviously way different than the original version. There's no yeah. like guitars <laughs> yeah. or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of it was kind of an interesting challenge to try to fit yeah. Sam's vocals into like the Great Good Final K kind of Sound. like electro mm-hmm. aesthetic. Yeah. Because that sounds um, almost like, it's a, almost a little folky in some ways. Well, like, it's it's anthemy. Yes, I, I I'd say anthemy is the right word. Okay, to... yeah, that's a good way to describe it. But um, you guys were on there with other artists, including Big Data, The Knox. You have to say the other uh, one because I can't. Savior Adore. Yep, thank I, you. I think that's how you pronounce it. Because <laughs> I can't pronounce their name. Um, but so that's like a pretty cool experience for you guys. So like, it's another way to get your music out there, even though it's you know maybe not entirely representative of your music but it's like a reaching out to another well, crowd well i think it's i think that's just a fun part of the music world now because mm-hmm. like instead of just ha- saying like oh yeah i want to cover this song live yeah you can like work with so many artists as a community and just mm-hmm. cross promote and remix their stuff and they'll uh remix your stuff and like it's just you it, you get to kind of do a cover in a new light exactly like that's why i love uh, bbc one radio yeah. live lounge because people can just go in there and do whatever, and I've heard some amazing covers come out of there. Demi Lovato. My favorite is Bastille covering We Can't Stop by Miley Cyrus, and it is beautiful in every way imaginable. But back to you guys. Um, so, yeah, Renegades, song by them. You guys got to kind of put your own little spin on it. Um, how long did it take you guys to kind of figure out how to arrange it in a way that still kind of represented a great, good, fine, okay? Um, I guess from start to finish, the whole remix probably took like two days, three days. Not too bad. Not too bad. The, yeah, I mean, the initial like idea came together pretty quickly, um, and I kind of got lucky with like picking, you know, the right sounds that seemed to fit. It was kind of about like trying to match the like aggressiveness of the vocals mm-hmm. with like with synths that are kind of in our world of production. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's going to be different than a great good Final K song because John's vocals are, you know, just a totally different character. Yeah. So you guys love working with other artists. You also worked with uh, St. Lucia on the song Something to Believe in. Um, so do you mind just telling me, like, a little bit about how it was working with him? And, I mean, St. Lucia is, like, Right up your guys' alley, just like the electro pop, and that's that exactly must have been that's what fun Justin uh, told me when I like I, I like, sent him your stuff. He's like, they sound like St. Lucia. I'm like, well, <laughs> I love St. Lucia. Uh, well, basically, how that happened is we had this song, um, something to believe in, uh, that we were about to release on our second EP, and we were in the final stages of um, polishing the vocals up and mixing it and finishing it, and um, we were kind of listening to that low part that I had originally sang. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of turned to Luke and said, I kind of feel like I'm just sort of like, I want this to sound like John from St. Lucia. <laughs> and uh, Let's call John from St. Lucia. Laughed. We both sort of laughed. And then I said, like, um, well, I mean, should we see if he wants to do it? And we kind of just like sat there for a second. And they're like, yeah, why not? So we um, we emailed him. We, we knew him. We had met him a few times uh, recently at different concerts and this and that. And he was really friendly. And we're huge fans of St. Lucia. Um, so we decided to email him and he was like so gracious and so willing to do it. And um, basically he was in on vacation in Germany and did it overseas and sent it to us by the time we needed it to release it. That's um, awesome. And just totally nailed it. Yeah. And it was like everything we had hoped it could be. That's, That's awesome. Great. So it's, it wasn't as, I guess, awkward as, you know, reaching out to someone you don't really know. Like, you guys kind of had built up um, at least an acquaintanceship, like, between each other. So it was like, hey, you want to do us a solid? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. But, like, still, you know, they were in the middle of recording their um, yeah. new album and traveling all over the world. So 
we kind of went into it like we're not going to hold our breath. Uh, you know, I, we know they're very, very busy. And so, uh, but yeah, they were super nice about it. That's awesome. So we have a third song here from you guys, Too Much to Handle. And you guys released a music video for this in February. Mm-hmm. Um, How was that experience of filming that music video and uh, or, the concept behind it? Um, it was cool. Uh, basically, this uh, director um, from California reached out to us about this idea of having a uh, virtual reality helmet and this, <laughs> and this kid. And it was kind of a loose idea when it started. Mm-hmm. And he sent us like some imagery, um, sort of some visuals of what it could look like and uh, some storyline points. And we were kind of just like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Let's go with it. Um, so we kind of together sort of fleshed out the little idea about this this kid um, building a helmet and walking through uh, New York City and this and that. And so uh, the director came to New York, and we did it in about two days, and it was a really, really fun experience. And uh, we feel like it really does kind of fit the song. So. That's awesome. So this is Too Much to Handle by Great Good Final Okay. Oh, 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 oh,
back with Great Good Fine Okay. We are just about done, but we want to get um, just a little bit more information from you guys. Um, would you mind giving us your social media information so people know where to follow you and stalk you and all that fun stuff? Especially stalking. Yeah, we are, we are everywhere. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, you name it, and pretty much on all the Periscope. Forms. Periscope. <laughs> Snapchat. Oh, wow. Um, we're pretty much at Great Good Fine OK at all of them. And it seems and, like a pretty um, good okay, name that you find you guys Just at. the letter is O and K, not O-K-A-Y. That's the biggest mistake people can make. It's too much it. effort. No, I mean, like, sometimes when you look up a band, you can find, like, 10,000 bands under that name. But you guys actually have a pretty unique name. Like, when you look, you're, you know, Great Good Fine OK up, you're the only one that pops up. So, What if there's another band out there called OK Fine Great Good? I don't know. I don't know about we'll that. Some but you guys are playing. <laughs> no, our, our search engine optimization is, is really uh, on point. <laughs> we now, got that SEO on lock. <laughs> now, the, the last thing I wanted to talk about real quick is just like any upcoming projects you have for the future or like if there's any like shows in certain areas that you're like really looking forward to outside of the tour and just kind of what your plan is for the future in the following months and years and decades and hopefully centuries if technology gets us there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're really, really excited about all the rest of the shows on this floor, and people can find those dates um, on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, and we definitely do have some other things in the works. We have another song that's actually a collaboration um, that's coming up, and I'll, I'll leave that as a surprise who that's with. And okay. um, we have uh, some other videos coming out, and we actually have another little tour we're about to announce in December, so a lot of cool things coming up, and awesome. people will have to just stay tuned. And then your show tonight, you're playing in Dallas. Would you mind giving us the venue so anyone who is listening live might get the chance to check you out tonight? Yeah, it's um, it's in Dallas at Club Dada. All right. Awesome. And what time do you guys go on? What time do we go on? <laughs> 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 we're in the car right with our tour manager so uh, <laughs> he says it's in the calendar <laughs> it's in the calendar well, we'll, well let's just in the say calendar early. in our phone just get there but early, i think it's right? usually it's usually eight or nine but okay. people can go on the website and find get out. there and line up now exactly all right well thank you guys so much for hanging out with us for this last 45 minutes it's been our pleasure to thank have you. you um this has been great good fine okay I'm Lauren Dero Owens. I'm Justin Tanucci. And this is the Music Project. See you guys.